Oh, are we all right? G'day, g'day. How are you doing? Good, good. Let me just set up some uh, robots for recording engineers. <laughs> robots? Mm. Sounds future. So how are you doing, Trav? Doing well, doing well. Um, I've got the bloody cold in right again, the bug. Oh, man. No, not COVID. Yeah, I'm not that bad. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, it's hard to avoid when you have to, like... Did you have to fly to your weekend gigs? Uh, no, last weekend it was uh, the pleasure of a train. Um, yeah which uh, oversold, so I had to stand up for two and a half hours by the exit door with my head on the ceiling on the way home. Oh, jeez. I uh, love it when they've got the, uh, uh, they got the um, you know, keep the space between people and all that, stickers everywhere. And it's like, if they've oversold the train, so nobody can sit down and everyone's standing in all the aisle and everything with their bags. Please keep your distance. What a word if you didn't oversell the train. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's not going to work. Uh, so. <laughs> so where, where did you play last, last weekend? Uh, I was in Manchester, actually. It was really cool. Really good gig. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Twisted Smile, it was called. Old School Night. So, um, yeah, it was cool. Really, really, really good, actually. Yeah. Didn't we have some um, Metabeats community members in Manchester? Uh, yeah, there were a few around. Obviously, that's Bezzy's territory. Um, then we've got Hobbs, who's another producer, um, DJ, who's on board from Manchester. Well, Manchester area, Bolton, that, that mm. area, neck of the, that neck of the woods. Yeah, there's a few. And then, of course, Rowetta from the Mondays as well. She's a Manchester girl. So... Uh, yeah, a few connections here and there. Lovely. And where are you off to this weekend? Uh, no. <laughs> so it was it's Holland, Amsterdam, and then I was supposed to go to Spain, but then the Spain one got cancelled yesterday. So, yeah, great. So an extra, extra night in Amsterdam then? Uh, no, just that's a change my plans and try and get a flight home instead so uh, yeah that's all done but I, there's one place that you don't really want getting stuck to be fair <laughs> if you're going to get stuck <laughs> somewhere <laughs> Amsterdam's a pretty good place to be stuck <laughs> yeah true <laughs> <laughs> right on yeah, what, what else has been happening um, this week uh, you know what not loads Monday like I say uh yeah, it was a bit of, I had a, a real late one on Saturday, the gig. So I didn't sort of finish until half four or five. And then I had to be at the hotel by 12 and then the train back and everything. So Monday was a bit slow. But um, yeah, I, I've just been putting the music on a few avatars and also writing a few little tracks for this collaboration I'm doing with another NFT um, project. That I'm really excited about. I'll let you know more about it once that uh, it's all underway and confirmed. I love his art. He loves my music. So um, I've sent him a tune, and we're we're looking to collab on something, which is pretty cool. So that's been what I'm doing mainly. Um, yeah, music, music has been nice actually because I haven't touched any music since I've been doing the NFTs. And I'm way behind yeah. what I was planning to do this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so we did we have had a couple of questions come in so far um good, good, we can good. we can address those one of them is on the topic of uh of your music yeah yeah for sure i mean and again any any Guys, anyone listening who's coming new, um, please, any questions you've got, anything about the project or anything, uh, drop them in the um, banter channel or whatever for sure. But, uh, I normally 
don't want to just keep waffling on to the same people about the project over and over and over again. If, uh, if you already know about it, obviously some of the people who are listening here are, have, have been in here before, but if you don't know anything and you need details, just put your hand up and we'll get you in to ask questions. I'd rather answer them direct than tell you the whole thing over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if, if you'd like to come up and have a chat, um, yeah, feel free to raise your hand. Yeah, for sure. That's the best way to do it, guys. And you can ask me exactly what, what you want rather than uh, listen to the same old stuff over and over again. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, with that said, I, I might um, might touch on these these questions that we have um, yeah, here. Yeah, Yeah, so the Prodigy Daily asks... Um, when will the new single or album be ready? And will you take part in the Prodigy concerts in July dedicated to the 25th anniversary of The Fat of the Land? Uh, my uh, <laughs> music, like I was just saying, I haven't really been, my head's been in this NST space so much. Um, I haven't had a chance really to think about new music. But again, I've, I've only really started to kick off with the gigs again and I normally write music so I can play it in my set so I haven't really had any inspiration to do it because I weren't doing any gigs um, I have started a new album uh, with really rough demo versions of a few tracks um, with this absolutely amazing vocalist I'm doing it with but yeah, no real dates. The album's underway, I suppose. I've got th three or four, like I say, demo tracks. Um, some studio session that I've done with Tim Hutton uh, down in Cornwall. We we done in January. We sort of put four or five ideas down. I haven't even looked at them since we've been back. So yeah, I've got a, a lot of music stuff to get stuck into, really. Um, but in terms of gigs and prod, no, it won't be nothing to do with me anymore. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, and yeah, so on you know, production and doing your doing your own music, um, you said you you went down to a studio and did some stuff with Tim Hutton. Um, was that Tim's studio? Uh, no, it's just Devon Analog Studio. It's like, um, obviously in Devon, in the south of England, but it's... And it's uh, an analog studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got all the... They got everything in there, classic loads of simps and that. None of that, not too much of the telephone exchange depth of stuff, you know, the plug-in stuff, a few of them, but it's mainly good old-fashioned Juno 106 and some really solid keyboards and a few one... Uh, few of a hunt there's like a hundred made handmade ones by a little english company and things like that they got a few of them and uh yeah it's just nice to go down there and just really try and gather a lot of sounds without um you know it's got rooms and you stay there you can eat there takeaways kitchen all that sort of stuff but for me i still like to sort of be in and out somewhere within two days so you make the most of your your time there. Otherwise, you end up sitting on a, a synthesizer for like an hour, messing around trying to get a sound out of it and stuff. And you know, it's it's quite easy to get lost in all the synths and stuff like that. But I'd rather just sort of jump on it. And the thing was with Tim, because Tim is just so musically cool, I could just find a sound and say, oh man, I need, look, I want to try and play something, let's get a funky bass line going with this sound, you know, and it just jam a funky bass, bass line for me. So, um, yep. yeah, it's like, uh, it's like having someone else's hands to paint for you. You know, I can see a picture, but he can just put it all together because he's mu so musically uh, talented, you know. So yeah, that was that was cool. And I've I've got all the bits and pieces in not saying projects, but I haven't opened them up yet. So uh, I've got to get back to that. But I am in a bit of a music I am in a bit of a music frame of mind at the moment, which is kind of nice. I think if you starve yourself, if you're creative and you starve yourself of something, even if you're sort of being creative in different fields, that that uh, need to get back to where you um, 
sort of belong, I suppose, or your base, your foundation of what you do is, it just comes along quite naturally. I'm, I'm back there, man. I, I really need to write, write a bit of music at the moment. Not quite sure what and where I'm going with it. Um, I actually been playing a lot of techno lately. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm doing a lot of old school gigs with the old breaks and things like that, which is is always cool because I just love that music. But after the two years of um, lockdown and not DJ, not gigging so much, um, yeah, I didn't really buy much music. And to be honest, I've, I've kind of gone off the a lot of the so called breakbeat stuff. Um, or the modern music, if you will, uh, production of breaks, yeah. it, it don't always do it to me. It's, it's just not enough quality out there, really. You know, you have a brilliant beat and bass line bit, and then it just drops into the cheesiest, I don't know, things. Oh, I don't know, I just don't, don't get stimulated enough. And so I've kind of going, finding I'm going back to techno a bit at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's the kind of stuff you're going to be uh, probably like most likely writing more of in like a techno genre. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm strong enough for that. I can I can get my own yeah. style of it uh, together, but um, <laughs> yeah. When I, I got mates, who, a lot of mates who do that, you know, obviously, and um, they do it real. That's their job. That's what they do. I can I can kind of do it, but. It's not a natural thing to me. I have to work at it, you know. Um, but playing it, I do like playing it. I've always sort of gone in and out of, after I played uh, back in the day when I used to play the rave music and that, and then it sort of went drum and bassy, jungle, dark side and all that. And then, um, yeah, I just couldn't couldn't stand that anymore. So I went back to techno again. But I'm funny with a 4-4 beat as well. I don't like that too long. I need it to have a bit of rhythm in it sometimes so uh, it's the same thing I'll, I'll get bored of playing techno unless I can track something down that's got break beats in it as well but yeah yeah apart from the old school I'm a little bit I don't know what I want to do when it comes to writing or playing music is that one of the driving factors for you um leaving like record labels and, and being more independent like the freedom to be able to do what you feel instead of, you know, uh, being put in a box and I suppose, you know, um, pigeonholed to a certain genre. Yeah, I think so. But I, uh, for sure, that's that's one of the problems that I know a lot of uh, my mates and DJs and that have. They kind of, um, oh man, I'd love to come and play a breakbeat set with you somewhere instead of doing this all the time. You know? But you get yeah. known for what you do. But, I mean, I suppose I'm quite lucky in that respect because the prod was always a mashup of sounds anyway. You know, so it was from hip-hop beats to, you know, out of space with jungly, ragger ragga stuff to guitar music. So I never had, I've never had bad, them boundaries on anyone. Lucky like that. Really, really lucky. I can just, you know, if I... Mm -hmm. Get well right after play at a festival. I've got to have music that can keep rockers happy in that as well. You know, you can't just stick in one one space when you're in a certain environment. So I've always been lucky like that that I can just play what I want. You know, you the whole yeah, it's very cool. It is hard if you get known for one thing because you know everyone grows up and everyone changes and sound changes. Your lights change, and like I said, I, I I felt that a lot with this the so-called breakbeat scene thing. It, it was like, man, this is so boring. You know, it's not stimulating me, and it's a struggle to find you know good music. So, you know, what are you supposed to do if you're known as a breakbeat? Yeah, just keep buying playing shit music you don't like. I don't play music. I know. I even know some who play music they don't even like because they want to try and be famous. Get your head around that one. Yeah, man, I fucking hate this stuff. But why'd you play it then? Well, I want to be famous. All right, good on you. Good luck with that. <laughs> you know, famous for something I don't like. Really good. 
Yeah, it's yeah, a it'd be hard to be good at something you don't like as well. I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's, I just try to think of myself in life I, just to be real. Why do something when it's not you that you don't like? Why would you do that? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure a lot of us have times in our lives where we've done jobs that we don't like because you have to do them. But to choose, to, to choose to play a style of music, you know, to base your career on that you don't like, because you want to be famous, it's kind of, to me, that's just wrong. Just be good at what you do with what, what, whatever tools you use, you know what I mean? Just be the, the best you can be. And don't matter what you play, it's how you make the, make the dance floor react. Don't matter, mm-hmm. don't matter what, you've, what you play, it's how you, you put it together, you know? But that's the times. This is the times, you know? It's the world nowadays. You know, everyone wants to be famous, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it also feels like, uh, you know, the trends are changing at a faster rate too. Like, it's it's hard to hard to stay relevant. Like, do you find that, um, you know, people are pivoting a lot in the in the space? Yeah, but again, you've got you've got that thing again. There's there's no stability anywhere in the, anywhere, is there? Especially in the sort of music thing and stuff. Unless you're on an underground label, um, you know, like Hobbs is listening at the moment. Hobbs UK and Jason laid back and and Giuseppe. They'll all tell you, man. Unless you're on small independents and you can keep on churning out um, your music and you've got a good um, outlet for it, you know, them them guys are on labels that aren't massive, but they're solid, you know, and they've always got an outlet for it. But thinking outside of that, you know, you've got to deal with the X Factor and shit like that, you know. So the underground thing will always be solid and always be, it will always be here because there's, there's always going to be a demand for it, you know. But unfortunately, the commercial side of music is really, really pretty sad for me at the moment don't get me wrong i'm an old man but you know i just i just don't get a lot of it It there's no it doesn't matter how old you are to understand that a hook and a good bit of music is and someone who can sing he's got a voice you know and can play an instrument well you know you don't don't matter how old you are to understand that but um it's like everything else man cheapness and trying to pull the wall over people's eyes all the time. Yeah, definitely. Yes, I was waiting for that line. (laughs) It's a favourite, it's a (laughs) favourite. Everyone loves it, you know. (laughs) Um, So we've got another question here from It Would Be Fun. Um, They ask... Are there plans for providing hardware utility like LPs for holders, for example? Yeah, again, all this sort of stuff is is really, really um, doable. Um, I'm actually, because we've not got a mad rush uh, for the release date, I'm actually looking at ideas um, with the team of, of the roadmap that maybe we can bring forward before the release. Um, you know, so there's. That this that was one of the points. I've always said that at some point, you know, um, with uh, if you hold an NFT and maybe we make an album, a physical album, pick ten NFTs. If you hold one of them NFTs and it gets picked, then you're going to get a royalty from the album, whatever physical release, you know. So there's also something I'm thinking about. Maybe like I said, pre mint that um, that we pick some of the tracks, make an album and release it and that NFT is still in the collection for someone to to mint Uh, and then they tag on with the utility of the the royalties afterwards, you know. Um, So, yeah, that that physical thing, again, it's a supply and demand thing and I think if um, people within the community want to hear that, and want physical things, then it's not a problem to do. But also the holder of the NFTs might not want to hear their music they on a physical thing. You know, some will want royalties from them, but some of them will say, well, I don't, you know, I've, I want that one, I want to 
be the only old holder of that bit of music in the world. I don't want anyone else to have it on a CD. So that's the sort of thing that we'll put to the community and um, stuff like that. But there's no reason, again, like I'm saying, that we can't just set up a record label side of this. You know, some of the artists might say, right, well, I've got some tracks I want to do, I want to put them out, and we'll put a collaboration album together. Everything's possible, because it's, it's, like I said, it's no different to the music business. It's just we're doing it in a slightly different way of making it small and cool and underground and, you know, not trying to outstretch ourselves and just keep it cool, man. And, yeah, anything's possible. If you can think of anything that can be done in the music business now we can do it and we can do that within a, you know a few months even to knock up an album and release it so uh, yeah it, it, nothing's nothing's undoable yeah I wonder if anyone's anyone's gonna want to be the uh, Martin Screlly of the of the group and you know mint the Adamski and keep it all for themselves That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be me. <laughs> Just get it pressed and burn the NFT. I ah, see, but listen, what you got to understand is the, the genius of Adamski, um, honest to God, guys, is uh, I used to follow him around when I was like 18, 19 to see him play. Um, um, his album, Live and Direct, is called. Uh, it's in my top 10 albums ever. It, it's just absolutely amazing. The technology he'd done it with was like a little keyboard. He had a drum machine and a keyboard, 16-track sequencer or 12-track sequencer live. Now, I know that doesn't to you guys. It was all MIDI. Honestly, it was amazing. And they play live and stuff. And um, his music actually in the collection is so unique because it's written at... Uh, three to the four timing so instead of going boom 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 it goes boom 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 <laughs> so it's a waltz so if you picture a waltz timing um people's dancing the waltz that's he's done it in a classical timing so it's like that so it's actually really really interesting your brain knows it makes sense but there's something if you don't know music you can't quite understand. It works perfectly well, but your brain knows there's something that's slightly different about it. And actually, for the concept of the avatars, if you're tagging it onto your avatar um, or your gaming, the the swing and the groove it adds to the um, the theme tune is is amazing. So Adamski stuff is is so uniquely clever. Um, yeah, I, I would love to have one of them. To be fair with you. He's one of my heroes, so you know. Just... Yeah, I can't say that I've heard much uh, three, four. Um, oh. You know, in the in like <laughs> electronic music, it's not. You know, everyone seems to be going four, four time signatures. Do you experiment with t any different time signatures yourself? No, no. It's, I mean, I I, uh, I, ended, I ended up doing a remix for um, a friend of mine. Gareth, it's, it's got a label in Scotland and uh, it's a techno label. An album of uh, Carl Cox, Adamski, Darren Emerson, Lenny D, loads of techno legends and stuff. And um, he was like, Do you want to do a remix? Pick one, who you want. And I was like, Oh man, Adamski's. And I was like, Yeah, I've, I've got to do Adamski. And he's like, It's in three to the four. But so if you mix it, you've got to do it in three to the four. He wants it in the same timing. I said, Yeah, so I'll do Darren Emerson then. Um, <laughs> mate, I'm telling you, three to four, my brain wouldn't even have to comprehend right. And it, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's ma it's all maths, of course, but it's kind of like, no, it's not natural flow. But I've actually seen Adam, I don't know where he gets all the music from, but I've seen him DJ, he DJs sets like that. And um, on his SoundCloud page, um, I'll actually knock him up to find a mix because... It, it blows your mind. It's totally, totally different. It's Mozart electronic music. <laughs> so, yeah, again, that's... He's the only one in the whole collection that's done that, I think. So, again, that adds something to the sort of rarity of um, what he's done, you know? Yeah, that's very cool. 
Yeah, three four's definitely got like a a much different pulse to it. To you know, to a four four. Yeah, yeah. I think even if you can, I'm not sure how much music, but even the clip of his um, avatar, I think this is it still in um, Sneak Peeks. I think that's. Uh, let's have a look. I'm not sure if we put the adapter one in there. Might not have it in there. Ah, ah, ah. Right. Yeah, see, again, I'm putting all the music on the avatar. I've got to... It's like, oh, man. Timing. How am I going to sync the drummers and stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they've all been made... Yeah. They've all been made in, like, a 4-4 a four, four rhythm, I suppose. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it. I've done it to all sync up nicely and stuff. But yeah. Okay, we'll have to we'll have to get one of them as a sneak peek pretty soon then. Yeah, yeah, I wanna hear everyone asking for it though. We'll be able to get loud in banter. Mm. <laughs> um Yes, yeah, how how many Adamski NFTs will there be in the collection? Uh, I can't tell you. <laughs> I told you I'd have to kill you. No, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Um, they, they'll, be, they'll be rare, yeah. I'd imagine. There's, uh, yeah, there's lots on there. Uh, there's lots of stuff that I can't really say about how many people have done yet. I think that's part of the... Um, he hasn't, he's put it this way, he's... Uh, he hasn't done as many as some others, so they're going to be slightly rarer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's enough to go around. Don't worry. <laughs> All good. I guess that leads us to uh, Nico 3's question. Um, are there any rarity traits? And if so, are they based on the graphic video or the audio? Um, Every token's music has the same duration. Uh, man, that's a that's a great question because um, I was having this out with a friend of mine actually the other day. You know, he's got into NFTs and he's in the collection. <clears throat> uh, he's got music in it. He's like, "Oh man, you know, I'm, I'm a bit dirty. We ain't got all traits on them and stuff like <laughs> like that." <laughs> Obviously, the percentage the numbers. And I said, "Look, dude, do you remember this is about the music? Yeah, the fact that." I've kind of wanted dope artwork on there is because I want everyone to have something they're really happy with, you know, instead of just a steel image and the bit of music, you know, because some people will want to collect this for different reasons. You know, the fact that it's a unique bit of music is the number one trait, really. Um, For example, if an artist has got 25, 30 tracks, <clears throat> every avatar is going to be different. So have their logo on there. Every single um, avatar of that artist will be different, different background. You know, if they've done, they'll have the drummers, the DJs and keyboard players. So um, that's if some of the ones won't have keyboards, if they've all their tracks have beats and stuff, because it just doesn't work. But the thing is, I think, the collectability, the traits are going to be, for me, I, I'll say to my friend, I think I've got a DJ, I need a, I need a drummer now. I like the drummers. Oh, man, I need a keyboard player now. You know, I think the, the collectible sort of traits are going to be the fact that there's three different ones. There's so many different backgrounds. Um, the fact that you might want to get, uh, you know, collect all of one artist tracks. Uh, oh man, I want to get all of Jason Laidback's tracks. You know that becomes a collector, a collector's ambition to grab as many as they can from one artist. Um, a certain style of music. Some of the artists, you know, have done haven't done as many tracks, so they're going to be rarer. There's going to be other artists that have done more tracks, but have got more variety. So, I think, I. Uh, it's very hard to stand there and say, right, I'm going to apply traits to it. But in terms of collectability, I think it's a lot of aspects to it. Let's call them traits that, as a collector, make you want to have them, i.e. the three different avatars. So straight away, I'm going to want three of them. You know, hoping to do 
um, almost like Willy Wonka ones, where some of them have got great stuff attached to them, i.e., you know, gig tickets, a studio session with me, uh, to write an NFT to get to the collection. Um, you know, so I think labeling traits, this percentage, that percentage, is not really how I set out to do it, to be fair. It was always about the music. Um, that was it from day one. So I think, I, I keep, again, I keep going through the stuff at the goblins and um, the elves and all the things that are dropping. You know, there's no roadmap to them and all these sort of things and that. And you sort of thinking, oh, God, you know, this is so different to ours. Da, 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 three means, blah, blah, blah. And then I just have to say to myself and the others, dude, look, this is about the music. It's not about the artwork. The artwork is an added bonus, really, from my point of view. <clears throat> you know, this is about you having that bit of music that's just no one else in the world has got. You can attach it to your avatar, to your your brand, your logo. It's a, it's a physical bit of music logo. You can take it, you can make music, you can... You know, that's you can't do that uh, with all the goblin things and the, the, the JPEGs. You can use them as a brand, yeah, like the Bored Apes people have been doing. Um, but a lot of it is, you know, what's going on at the moment in the NFT scene. Like I say, one minute you've got, you have a month of everyone saying, what are the utilities, atta- utilities attached to it? I'm not buying anything unless it's got utilities. You know, and that's the in word. Um, and then the next month, you got every single fucker dropping a mint, free mint, with you know some pretty ugly artwork, no roadmap, and people are all over it. You know, it's it's, it's it's just really really strange. But it makes your brain just go, oh man, should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? At the end of the day, it's like you can't worry about what other people. Are doing. It's just delivering what I. Uh, always believe I can and that's quality bits of music and some amazing artwork attached to that you know yeah and like you like you said like the utility there's there's so much to it that you know is possible and you know if people want to want to have like the rarer this or that like I guess um it's going to be in the number of the of the pieces that that artist has done. So, um, that's basically the, the main rarity factor, right? Like that would be how many, how many NFTs, um, has that producer made? Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. But again, that, that doesn't, it doesn't, because to me, it's kind of like some of the artists were like, well, you know, this is my first step into NFTs. I don't know. You know, I don't really know what's going on. Da, 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 da. I, I'll just do 10 and I'm happy to put 10 in and sort of like feel my way through it as I go along, you know. So, uh, of course, I set off with plans to write this amount of artists, this amount of tracks, but that all goes out the window, you know. You can't necessarily stick to that within the time frame you want and stuff like that. So some people did, did more, some did less. But, again, another artist who was one of my heroes is, has done 50 you know they're the biggest amount out of the all the whole collection but to me you know they've had number one hits like to me they're one of my heroes and because uh they didn't stick to the genre that they were exactly known for that to me makes them rare because you don't get they're they're like an electronic band and they've been doing some drum and bass stuff which is they don't do so if you're a follower of that, these some, a lot of these artists, if you're a follower of them or you look into their back catalogue or their music, you'll find that, man, that's really rare. They don't write music like that. No. So, you know, what, <laughs> again, like I say, what, what do you put, what do you put that down as a trait or what? It, it, you can't, there ain't no, every single bit of music is a one-off. So yep. how rare do you want it? That, that's that's the end. That's the end of the day, you know. How rare do you want it? One of the only one in the world. You don't get no rarer than. 
yeah yeah it's, it would definitely be worth you know look researching on the uh artists that you end up minting and making that decision you know or, on what your perceived value of it is you yeah, know based well, on based on what that artist's doing in the world and you know um what you see the um the beat being used for in your own eyes well i think it's it's like anything you know if it, if it makes a connection with which is what music is about the same way as art and like i say i'm trying to give two ways of connecting with the art and the, and the music um to start with then the fact that you know if you do your research look into some of the artists there'll be music that you like for sure because there, there's so many variations of music in there um and history um so you know there's no need to wait to the mint it's like get get looking at that into that now you know come you know you know what artists you're going to be typing stuff like that so yeah this whole uh, platform is about research you know nft space you know we'll all get run um somewhere along the line but at the end of the day the longer you have to research, research a project and believe in it the more confident you are about investing in it and at the end of the day, you know, these free mints, everything coming out, there's a lot of that stuff going on. But I do think there is still lots of detraction from the fact that a lot of the NFTs spaces are an investment, you know, and there's, there is flipping and lots of that's needed in the world and people do that as well. You know, I've tried it myself every now and again. I'm not stupid, but um, yeah, I think it's a bit of a fragile space at the moment. And at the end of the day, um, the cost of living in the whole world as well don't help. But people want to see things that they know they can investment back on or uh, in the long run are going to be part of something that that money uh, makes, makes it worth being part of. You understand what I mean? It's kind of, you know, people pay money to go to gyms or certain clubs and have memberships of things and stuff like that. Um, and that's what they want back from it, you know. So there's there's so many different reasons for people to get involved in the project. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to spend the time and educate people about the whole thing. I think it's, it really is a scary space at the moment. So people want to be putting their money into something that, you know, they can trust. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the... Um... I guess the state of the the crypto market in itself is is one one source of the fear that's going on right now. But yeah, there's uh, there's a little bit of grubby play. But you know, we're we're still here. We're vibing. Um, uh, do you have any indication of what like the mint price will be? No, 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 really at all. I mean, again, that's the the rest of the guys in the team. The people who are more specialists in the NFT market than I am, and stuff like that. And again, it, you know, the value of something to someone, like I said, depends on how they understand it as well, to an extent. I, I feel um, the more I can explain this to people, the more people can, you know, look at the, the different avatars, sneak peeks, what's coming out, and research the artists and things like that. I think that's where the sort of value is going to be seen. I mean, I, I'm sitting there, it's my project. So I'm going to sit there, I'm going to, I think it's valuable because I, I've always collected things. I've got Star Wars stuff, I've got Batman stuff, I've got Simpsons stuff. I'm a collector. You know, when my daughter was a baby, that's what I've done. Instead of buying crap every Christmas, I went up to London and got, went and bought a bit of art from a, uh, you know, from a cartoon as, and now when she's older so she's going to sell all that shit and buy yourself a car that's what I bought it for you know what I mean yeah. so it's all gone up in money so it's collectible stuff you know so I'm I'm all over that and the thing is I'm also uh, one I've got morals and two I want people to buzz that's why I was put on this planet man to <laughs> give people a good time and man I want I want this collection to be something that's so cool that you want one you know, that's what I'm doing my utmost 
not to cut corners, not to try and rush it, you know. And like I say, what is the value of owning a bit of music by that's the only one in the world? I, how do you put a value on that? You know, how do you do that? It's, you know, I, I've got the only hand-drawn Simpsons cell from the cartoon in the world. You know, that makes me buzz. That makes me buzz. Yeah. And it's always going to go up in value. The only one. I mean, I don't know. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm a mug to think that. But that's what that's what it's all about, isn't it? The collecting and the investing. You know, some people do it in bottles of wine. Some people do it in art. Why should it be any different from music? Yeah, absolutely. Because that's that's all it is. I'm not like I say. You're not trying to. Comp- I don't know. I don't know how to. Where do you fit in? It is such a new thing. It's such a new platform. Um, such a new space, but you know, I, I feel like the they merge perfectly together, music and NFT space. And like I say, we're all artists. We've all have fan bases. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this job. We all know what it is like to have to have fan base and communicate, and you know, to deliver music and deliver quality. Otherwise, you're not here anymore. We wouldn't be doing it for thirty five years, you know, unless. Unless we were all doing something right, you know. So, um, yeah, it's this is this is to me. It's it's um, I say can't say surefire hit, but to me this is a no-brainer. It's like man, everyone likes music, you know, and to own it, to own that music, you know, man, you can buy ten of my tracks and make your own sort of mini. And make money out of what off of my back of what I've done, you know. So, so that's investing, I'm sure. That you know, it's not like a car. The minute you take a car out of the shop, a quarter or a third of the money. Do you know? What I mean? yeah. But you don't don't blink an eyelid if you've got the money to buy a car, do you? you know? Even though it's going to go down as soon as you've got to turn it turn the key on, you know. Yeah, I mean, what I will say about, uh, you know, Ethereum NFTs is that, you know, the mint price isn't necessarily the end price, you know, with the, if the demand is high and everyone's trying to mint, then obviously there's more strain on the network and gas fees are higher. So in a way, that's, you know, the community determining the price point to as like a starting base, you know, the mint price plus the gas fee, no one's going to sell for less than that unless the really want to lose money and you know be be proper degens but yeah, and the thing is there's not guess you can have like a low mint price with high gas fees or a high mint price with less of gas fees because there's less of competition to mint so yeah, well, for me it's, it's again it's like there's there's only a thousand of them there's not ten thousand of these things yeah like, the quality is 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 there and like i say you can't it's not just a template that's manipulated traits different traits this is like every single bit is handwritten unique you know so the time and, and that what do you put a, how do you put a price on on someone's time and artist's time and stuff like that you know and then it's to me it's it's a utilities of mate you can come you can get tickets to my gig attached to it you can have a dj lesson with me online you know you can have a production lesson with me online and There'll be other artists doing this as well. You can have the stems that I made the beats with, so you've got all the samples from it. You know, you can, like I say, you can write an NFT with me that can go and you'll get royalties from it as if you're just like a one of the other, one of the crew. You know, there's so many things where you can say, right, well, I can knock that off the price of it. I can knock that off the price of it. And I'm going to do merchandise. I can get a discount off of everyone's merchandise. It. I can knock this, you know. It, that's the whole point of this. It's not like it's about giving as well as uh, receiving stuff, you know. I want everyone to to feel like they've got more than more than they're worth, you know. It's like man, right? And, and opportunity. The community. I want this place where people come and share what music they do and what they uh, work they do, and they can connect with other people in the community in the group. You know, and help each other out. There's, there's, there's space for that. 
everyone needs a bit of help and a bit of advice. Place that, that can work for everyone. You know, I want to get, um, you know, unknown people coming in and having a chance to DJ and stuff like that. And, you know, everyone needs a bit of help. Well, everyone starts somewhere. And it, it isn't just about having to pay for all these things all the time. It's always, oh, pay to do this, pay to do that. Well, how about let me do it for, let me have a go for do it for nothing? You know, and if I'm good enough, maybe invite me back on again. You know, there's, there's, that's how I want it to be. I just want this to be a place where, you know, if the value in the NFTs is just something that adds to the value of your life in general. You know, cool music to learn about. Going back 30 years, DJs, you know, videos, music, life lesson. You know, if I could have gone, if I could have gone back and listened to, uh, let me pick a genre like, if you look at the punk, the punk rock scene in England with the Sex Pistols, the Clash, the Undertones, all these bands. Um, I got lucky enough to meet. Like, but the point is, it's kind of like, mate, I, I got a chance to actually get involved with them people, speak to them people that were in a scene that dominated. Uh, England and spread around the world, you know, and I can, can communicate with them people. I can learn how they wrote music and get tips for, from them. You know, I can communicate with these people in this group. You know, and that's what I want to do. And th there isn't any other spaces. You know, there really isn't anything else like this. So I'm sure people would be cautious because they, they can't relate to it as being the same as anything else as well. But man, this, this whole thing is, for me, is about transparency and about, you know, a lot of my mates and musicians who have always been into sharing what they do, their talent. That's why we do what we do. So I want to make that available um, to all the community, you know, whatever you do. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of value in owning a Metabates NFT, that's for sure. I hope so. I hope um, it... one th one thing that we didn't touch on, uh, we just didn't have an address Nico's question um, about the duration of the NFTs. Um, uh, I'm of uh, the understanding that there's going to be a bit of variance in how long these tracks are going to be. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, Nico. The, yeah, the length of the NFTs is between 45 seconds and um, a minute and a half. I know there's a couple of artists that sneak over that by 10 or 20 seconds, a few tracks, but... Um, yeah, it was all about delivering a theme tune to basically be looped. So if you're flying around in the metaverse or walking around, you've got your own theme tune that will continually loop. So um, it can just be re uh, play repetitively. That was the whole the whole point of it. So to do that and achieve it so it's not too boring and people listen to it um, was a great little challenge. I know for a lot of the musicians. So. That was the whole, um, yeah, the whole brief for them. I didn't, like I said, I don't want to try and write whole songs and take on the record industry. You know, the guys here in normal circumstances, you're, you're writing music and giving it straight to the publisher to try and to register it so they're collecting any royalties for you and stuff like that. But that hasn't come into play. Into so, you know, we're we're giving the music away and. It was a pleasure not just to try and write it in a structure um, for for a night nightclub or for a radio. It was just freedom to put down an expression, uh, an emotion that humans can connect to. So it was a really great experience, and it, it didn't have to be long. To a lot of people actually said they they uh, wanted to keep the tunes to. Uh, the loops to make into four tunes um, and that was a pretty that some of them were like right this is how I'm going to get all the ingredients in a short time stretch it all out so it's a really interesting process of writing yeah I'm sure there's I'm sure there's some songs that are developed out and filed way deep in some hard drives um, yeah it could be could be very cool to you know get something and you know 
the artists that might already have something ready to go if you if you're wanting to you know have a track that that can be put out there that you can earn from right away like it do you think that would be something that that could be happening oh man i mean like i said i'm not quite sure about again this this whole releasing the whole music it's totally doable right you know like an album ep but the the two two issues that i had with it first of all that that was not the initial plan you know so the the initial plan is to focus on the nfts and the art getting that, that all synced together everything else um can be done off that the timing i always said was really should have been a bit more of down to the community deciding on what comes next and oh, right we've got options of right should we do a release of it? do we do a virtual party do it, you know and then the community sort of make up some of the uh decisions help with the decisions of how you take the 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 roadmap along you know so um it's a tricky one like i said it, everything's doable I'm trying to think of ways. Again, if I say to you, right, I'm going to come in the studio and me write, an, write music, we we'll make it an NFT and put it in Mint, you know, them three people are going to be tweeting about it. And they're going to get money straight away from it, from as soon as it gets minted and stuff, you know. So, again, I'm still got to make a few decisions. I keep coming up with waffling on, you know, oh, man, I could do that. It comes into my head. And then all of a sudden, you know, I have to go away, write it down, go away, talk to everyone and say, right, that's another idea. Should we do that first? Should we do it after the mint? Do it before the mint? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. it's, uh, a lot of it takes its own shape. But I think that's, if you've, you know, if you've got patience and you're listening to the people that are going to invest in it uh, that's surely that's priority it makes sense you do your market research everything before you put a product you know so our product's different to everything else so we can't exactly predict exactly how things should go you know at the end of the day it's the nft space and if someone had told you last week um you'd have got over to ethereum for an ugly little goblin you know you would have been like <laughs> Yeah, right. I'll buy 50 of them. But, you know what I mean? That's how it works. You can't... You ain't got a crystal ball. You've just got to, I think, attract the right customer, the right person, let them spread the word, the same as it did when you heard a new record. You you went around someone's house, they heard... You told people... And I think this this is one of those things that's going to be organic and grow like that, you know? Very cool. Uh, just as we approach the top of the hour, um, for anyone that had questions, yeah, feel free to drop them in, ask the artist or um, banter and tag me. But um, yeah, yeah. Leroy, did you have any uh, final remarks in case we've got nothing coming in the, in the questions front? Oh, man, like, like I say, it's just uh, spread the word, do your research. Um, Never hesitate to drop any questions in here, whether it's just in the banter or opening tickets. I'm sure people will get back to you about um, anything we can. Uh, yeah, just I just want people to um, come part of it by doing a bit of research. Look, uh, because I think once you start hearing some of the music, start picturing a bit of some of the, the, the styles of music you're going to expect. Know? so get get on board with that if you're new to the nft space you know take your time research some other projects um there's some amazing there are some amazing projects out there and uh, that think outside the box that aren't just art um there's some really cool gaming nft projects out there and yeah just if you're new to that Take your time, look into it because you hear from music, the NFT is still like a swear word, it's still like alien language. So, connecting the two 
seems to be my biggest uh, goal. The biggest, the hardest part of this, really, for me, is connecting everyone's fan base who buys music and letting them understand what an NFT is. Because again, Europe and the UK is such a long way behind that we're trying to educate people, and it's going to take a bit of time. You know, if you can actually get the people because musos don't really play with Twitter too much you know had that were really really active we're normally more yeah. posting pictures and song stuff so yeah we're still trying to cross on that that is the hardest thing so and we're depending on word of mouth and uh, you know people texting and it's not as easy as you think as soon as you start doing um posts on Askbook with tags to different platforms it stops reaching after people normal post i'm having a steak and chips reaches you know if you're doing you're trying to promote your business and your new project you know oh no they're sending links on there that send people away from facebook so we're not going to make it reach people you've got all that shit to deal with you know what i mean so it's like i say you've just got to be patient and I look at the people here, and there's plenty of people I haven't seen in the chats uh, before. So you know that somehow they've heard about it and words. And we can only do the best we can to keep that momentum going, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. We're definitely going to keep it going. Yeah. Uh, yeah, speaking of that, we've got um, Richter starting in a few minutes on the, on the warehouse stage. He's got some... We've got a live DJ set, uh, which he tells me is going to be, you know, a mix of classics and breakbeat and tech house. So, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I've got um, Giuseppe wants to do a set, so we we'll have to pick that one in. Um, yeah, yeah, that's enough for tomorrow. We've got obviously Tim and Glenn from Future Funk Squad in the AMA for a chat. So if you're around, guys, please come to that and find out a bit more about some of the other artists, which is what it's all about. Keep spreading the word. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'll have to try and get an Adamski sneak peek sorted out for you so you can hear the waltz timing. <laughs> yes, we've seen we've seen some uh, a visual teaser of the Adamski um, stuff, yeah, but not, had, haven't yeah. heard anything yet. Yeah, it had the theme tune on it. It didn't have yeah, 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 it did. Back on there, yeah, yeah. I'll get that. Sort of. I've done one. <laughs> As usual, when you got nine, when you got a thousand, keep yeah. on which one you've done is uh... <laughs> not the easiest thing. Awesome. Cool. So, are we going to hand well, over? Yeah, thanks. We'll hand over to Richter now. Yeah. So. um Thanks for dropping in for our, our little sesh today. And, uh, yeah, let's keep the vibes high and uh, the dance floor moving. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm going to end this stage event now, and then, yeah, Rick will set the new one up, so just have to have to rejoin. But thanks for coming, everybody. And, uh, yeah, enjoy your Wednesday night or Thursday morning if you in my part of the world. Mm, good one, son. Yeah, big thanks for everyone. Please come back to around. Any other questions, feel free to drop them in banter. Um, I'll just hassle Trav 24 hours a day and uh, he'll get back to you. I hope. <laughs> of course I will. Yeah. All right, people, have a good one. Stay safe. Cheers, everyone. Bye.